everyone, good morning. Welcome to Coffee with Kelly, week 125. And I'm so happy that you joined me this morning. And our topic is uh, called Tangled in Guilt. How do you like that topic? It's not actually an easy topic or a fun topic to talk about, but um, I think you'll agree it's something we all get tangled up in. So uh, let's pray. Father, we come before you this afternoon or this morning. Lord, I thank you for those who are watching and joining me today. And I thank you that we can uh, look in your word and look at different topics and and just see what uh, you have to say about it. Lord, and as we look at guilt and how we feel guilty, what we should feel guilty about, what we shouldn't feel guilty about, I pray, Lord, that you would search our hearts, show us if we deal with bad guilt, um, if we allow ourselves to be burdened with guilt, and I just pray that you would speak to us. Make it really clear, Father, through your Holy Spirit, uh, what you want us to glean um, from this time together today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, again, the topic I um, hate to talk about actually is guilt. I am a very guilt-prone person. I was brought up that way, and so it's a real thing, guilt. Now, I hate being motivated to do things by guilt, although sometimes it works on me. You can guilt me um, into doing just about anything. I hate being burdened, the burden with it. Uh, it messes me up, it frustrates me, it, sometimes it confuses me. Do I feel guilty? Is that my conscience, my practical conscience? Is that the Holy Spirit? Um, is it just misplaced guilt? Why do I feel bad? Am I supposed to feel bad? So um, it can really become an issue. You know, guilt is really a strange feeling and a strange emotion. It can be good or bad, I think, depending on what it drives you to. And I'm not really talking about, I guess, the guilt of sin or the guilt of original sin, if you will, that we carry around when we don't know Christ. And when we accept him and what he did for us on the cross, he removes that guilt. Uh, Jesus sets us free from the guilt and shame of sin. And you and I know that. And, and in fact, Peter said in 1 Peter um, 2.24, Jesus bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. So we, knew, we know that Jesus' blood covers that sin and that removes that guilt from us. And we walk free in Christ in that sense. The kind of guilt that I'm talking about after we are saved, sometimes we continue to be burdened by guilt for things we did, for things we didn't do, for things that we feel like we should have done, for things that other people think that we should do, something we did morally wrong or things that we perhaps should feel guilty about. Um, guilt can be valuable in one sense if it drives us to Christ um, if it leads us to repentance for something that we've done and confession of sin, guilt uh, it is great in that sense. It can be a tool that God uses in our life to convict us of sin and drive us to him. But when we hold on to that guilt longer than we should, let's say um, we confess it to the Lord, he offers us forgiveness of sin, and yet we, I guess it's kind of like we say, okay, um, God forgives me, but I don't forgive myself. So we hold on to that guilt. And, and honestly, that's really a slap in God's face because we're like, well, we believe in repentance and forgiveness for everyone, but my sin is too bad. Your sacrifice on the cross doesn't cover my sin. You know, it's just too big for that, God. Or we are too ashamed, or we feel like we deserve to walk around in this guilt at times and feel bad about it. Um, we deserve it. We believe Satan's lie that we need to punish ourselves rather than accept God's forgiveness. Um, that kind of guilt, you know, guilt really is just um, self-focus, isn't it? It's self-focus, which again, if it drives us to Christ, great. But if not, it's not very helpful. It can, again, cause us to keep our eyes on ourselves. It paralyzes us. It immobilizes us. Instead of looking at others and looking at God and hearing his voice and being obedient to things that he's called us to do, we're so focused on ourselves and our guilt and blah, 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 that it simply is no good for anything. 
Now, the technical definition of guilt, there were a few. Uh, one of them was the state of one who has committed an offense or feelings of deserving blame, especially for imagined offenses or from a sense of inadequacy. In, in Sorry, it's a hard word to say. Okay, so the guilt that I'm talking about, I guess, is really because um, you could do Bible studies on guilt that last, believe me, hours and hours. But the guilt that I'm talking about is what was said in that definition for imagined or uh, offenses or from a sense of inadequacy. So something that we think we might have done, something that we think uh, that someone else thinks we should have done. Like, where is all that guilt coming from? And so I have a story about this, which spurred my thoughts on this. And of course, you know I have a story, right? I always got a story about everything. But, okay, go with me. So I am a recovering people pleaser. Um, I say recovering, not recovered, because I still deal with it at times. Um, I don't even realize I'm doing it, but I want people to like me. I want to do the right things. You know, we all have that to some degree. I know Paul says in Galatians chapter 1, we're to please man, not God. I know, I mean, we're not supposed to please man. We're supposed to please God. I know it says it in Acts as well, we ought to please God and not man. So I know those concepts. But again, if you're a people pleaser and you want people to like you, um, guilt can tangle you up. That's the title of this, Tangled in Guilt. Literally, you can get tangled in guilt if you are a people pleaser. So here's the story. Now, I shop at Albertsons. I don't know where you stop, shop. Maybe it's the same anywhere you shop. But they have donations for different causes all the time. For instance, right now, when you use your credit card or whatever, you're checking out your ATM, it always comes up, would you like to donate to so-and-so, the homeless, the this, the that, the veteran. So it always comes up on that screen. Well, right now, the one at Albertsons, it comes up and it says, would you like to donate to those with disabilities? Again, it doesn't say what organization. I'm sure I could find that in a poster somewhere in the store. But... I have such a hard time pressing the button no. You know what? I, I think that I'm as generous as God has called me to be. I give when he puts it on my heart. I have a lot of organizations that I donate to and that I work with. And so I don't have to and I don't believe that we're called to donate to every organization. And plus, I shop at Albertsons every single day. That's where my Starbucks is. That's where I get my coffee. I, it, my Albertsons is across the street from my house. I used to have my ATM in there. One-stop shop, always at Albertsons. And so uh, every day, if not multiple times a day, that little screen pops up and says, would you like to donate to those with disabilities? And I have to, or feel, you know, whatever, and to press no. It is. It rips my heart out every time I have to press no. It makes me feel like I'm a horrible person. It makes me feel like I don't care about the people with disabilities. None of that is right, but it goes through my head. And I think, what if the checker thinks, what's wrong with her? Why doesn't she want to donate? What would I do, donate every single day to an organization I don't know anything about, haven't looked into, and, and they're probably not paying attention whether I donate or not, right? It just comes up. But something about pushing the no button kills me. Like on Sunday, we just talked about the story of the Good Samaritan and, you know, who is my neighbor or who is not my neighbor. And so it makes me feel like, am I saying that those with disabilities is not my neighbor when I press no? Of course not. But I feel guilty every time that little screen comes up. And every time I press no. And should I feel like that? No. Do I have to donate every time that comes up? No. Again, I can't continue to donate there every single time. But it takes everything in me to push the button no. Today I actually talked to the barista about it. I said, do you know how hard this is when this comes in to press no? It makes me feel like you think I don't care about people with disabilities. And I do. And she's like, I don't even know what it says. So obviously she's not looking at me. But again, you struggle with what do people think if I don't pass, uh, press no. 
for goodness sake, they think I'm a pastor's wife. They know I'm a pastor's wife in the town. And what, you don't believe in people with disabilities? Like all those thoughts run through my head every single day. It's because I'm a people pleaser. And you know what? I know theologically, I know in my heart, the Lord knows how much I give. He knows that I'm obedient. Hopefully most of the time when he puts something on my heart, someone to give towards, when he prompts me to give, I do. But oh, how guilty I feel and how embarrassed if the checker sees. That is the entanglement of guilt that I'm talking about. Guilt for the imagined offense that I'm blaming myself for. I'm blaming myself that I'm not uh, giving in something that God hasn't even called me to do. So, have you, has that ever happened to you? So my question is, why do you do what you do? Why do you give places you give? Why are you generous in ways that you're generous? Is it based on guilt? Is it, ba is it to impress others? Or to make others think you're something that perhaps you're not? Not wanting them to think you're ungenerous or a flake. Giving to an organization giving to every organization that asks me for help is not a sign of my spiritual health. It's not a sign of how spiritually fit I am or how spiritually mature I am. Not so. We are called to be generous, but we are called to be generous as we're able, as we're led, and as we are able. And, we, and uh, that is important to remember. We are called to be obedient, to him, no matter what that looks like. Um, and if we just do things because we feel guilty, what's the point of that? To make me feel good, to impress you? That's all ridiculous. What does it matter what they think of me? Galatians again tells us to please God and not man. Um, it's not our aim to be mean to man, but you know what I'm saying. Our priority is to please God. We can't live our life seeking to please others, impress others, and convince others of um, what kind of character we are. God knows our heart. So I challenge you today. Do you carry around imagined guilt? If it's guilt for an actual sin, then God's probably putting that guilt on your heart and in your conscience to drive you to repentance. And if that's true, and if you've done the deed that he's you know, impressing on your heart, you know, go to him, confess, repent, ask for forgiveness, and walk away a free woman in Christ. And that, that might involve um, making amends with someone else um, that you've sinned against. So do whatever it is that God showed you to do. In fact, I think about in Psalm 32 where David uh, is talking about um, keeping his sin silent. And, and the result of that, he says his bones grew heavy and they were wasting away. That's what he felt like. That was what it was like, to, the burden of living with unconfessed sin. And then in that same Psalm, he talks about the forgiveness of sin when he breaks the silence and confessed his sin and the heaviness that was removed. You know, forgiveness frees us. And so if that's what's going on and that's what guilt you have, deal with that. But if you are simply tangled up like a rubber band for false guilt, practice letting it go. Confess that too, because that can be a sin because it causes us, again, to remain self-focused. And that is not where our eyes should be. And that emotion can become sin in our life when we begin to blame ourselves for things that aren't yours to carry. So keep our eyes off ourselves. So guilt, useful when it drives us to repentance, bad if we allow Satan um, to use it to drive us away from God. So examine your hearts this afternoon. What kind of guilt are you carrying? Are you tangled with guilt from an imaginable, unimaginable sin that you didn't commit? I get untangled, bring it to the Lord so that you can walk straight on the path. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word and I thank you for your spirit that helps us discern between the guilt that we're feeling. Are we being a man pleaser? Or are we seeking to please Christ? And so I pray that we would be able to ask that question. Your spirit would um, show us what the answer is to that. 
and that we wouldn't be so self-focused and think everything is about us. And when it is a real sin and we've confessed it and brought it to you, that we would receive and accept that forgiveness from you. God, we know that your uh, forgiveness covers every sin. Um, there is nothing too hard for you to forgive. And so I pray that we would receive that forgiveness and walk in freedom and not continue to live in that state and beat ourselves up. So I just, with all these random thoughts today, I pray that you would search our hearts, Father, and open our eyes, Lord, to what you are calling us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. I will see you next week.